Well, we're one for two so far. One upset and one as it kind of was laid out. Tom, Justin, and Ryan here on the desk bringing you the business for game set number three of four. As I said, Insignum besting trifecta, the European minor league team taking care of business and beating the professionals. Earlier today, we saw LG take care of Nocturnes, although a lot closer than we might have expected as we're here in the halfway point of our afternoon. Quite an exciting time so far. LG took three games, but they got there, and then Insignum, as you mentioned, with the great upset. So now we'll have to wait and see if the mouse is the next on the list to get upset potentially up against Get On My Level. And get on my level, the SEA team has is the youngest scene really of the Smite Pro League of overall here. And they're kind of the jankier of the leagues is probably the best way to say them. And probably their best matchup here is against Mouse Esports, who's kind of known as the jank of the EU scene. So it's going to be kind of interesting to see what kind of compositions these two teams are going to have up against each other. Yeah, Get On My Level has been very interesting. Of course, I would be remiss if I didn't mention the fact that they have a New Yorker on their team, despite being from Southeast Asia. So that's certainly going to be a boost for them. How are you feeling there, Agro? Great. <laughs> Fantastic. So talk to me a little bit about Get On My Level. We've seen, uh, you mentioned that they're a little bit janky. Expand. What do you mean? I mean, they just don't play the, the traditional meta that we're so used to, the Here's your mage in the mid lane. Here's your hunter over here. They'll play Hobble ADC if they want to. They'll throw some kind of random guardian up into the jungle if they so be. I mean, SEA has had a history of playing these very awkward style picks, but it's just what works for them. I mean, one day you walk up and you're like, okay, what are we going to see banned here in first phase from SEA? Someone will go, Loki Hobwa. And then there goes, Loki Hobwa, it's off the board. I mean, that's just what the SEA is known for. Is it, it, It's kind of the fun region yeah. to really watch here. And really, for me, get on my level upping over Mashu Boys, who's really been the prominent of the SEA as of recent, is a real testament to how much this team has grown. Yeah, it's been exciting kind of watching them uh, come up and up and up. And going against Mouse Sports, which again is jank, if not anything else. Ryan, speak to them. Mouse has uh, been that kind of weird team for a little bit, but I, I do think that we might see them go a little bit more traditional now that they made these changes. Frostiac joins and goes into the jungle. Cherio slides over to support, and Dardes also with the slide over to ADC. I, I do think that, that Mouse is a team that you have to watch out for, but I think they'll be ready here for Get On My Level, the player and the team. Yeah, forgive me. Uh, I'm laughing a little bit. Production letting me know that our interview is ready. We're standing by with Get On My Level and Get On My Level. Thank you guys at the desk. I'm here with Get On My Level, the soul leaner for Team Get On My Level. How are you feeling for the very first day? Uh, pretty good. Had a long flight, but uh, we're settling in now. Well, now you're here in Georgia, going up against Mouse Sports. You were here in spring, you were here in the summertime. What have you learned from those two splits to now being here in the fall? Well, the meta's definitely been shifting a lot, and we're trying to keep up and uh, see what's new. So for the fans at home specifically that might not be too familiar with your team, but what kind of identity do you bring to the battleground of the gods? Uh, we're definitely an ag aggressive team mm -hmm. and uh, try to stay aggressive, I guess. So we might be seeing a lot of aggressive picks. So once you guys make it to HRX, what other teams are going to be joining you? Uh, we're probably not going to make it there, but uh, hopefully we'll see a lot more NA teams because mm -hmm. uh, that's what I'm rooting for. Well, get on my level here. The soul leader for get on my level. Back to you at the desk. I yeah. love that guy. Yeah, that's no, perfect. Yeah, he, he's he's a blast. I, I got the opportunity to hang out with uh, get on my level, the star player of get on my level uh, earlier in the year during the summertime. That's, by the way, the homie from Queens. Uh, he's a fun guy. Yeah. It's a cool team. A little bit more mm, sobering, I think. Realistic. That See, that's. I feel like that's the mean word to use. <laughs> Uh, oh, okay. Can, yeah, a little bit more sober, a little bit more realistic, I think, from his end. Mouse has uh, kind of solidified themselves as the surprise team, even when they're not surprising you. Um, and get on my level, like we said, just uh, they're, they're going to have a hard time. But, J Mac, you're really inundated with the SEA team or the SEA scene. How, it, it, how does get on my level find a victory here? They really just got to push their early game more than anything. They're kind of like the SML teams where their their main thrive is in the early stages, getting those quick picks, getting that quick 
hit, ball running down the hill as fast as they can. Because once it comes to that late game, they're not always known for picking up these later compositions. We do know Maker Love, probably the most famous player on the team, aside from Get On My Level himself with the uh, soloing of Zapman back at Worlds. Yeah, Maker has been around for a long time, back when China represented them themselves. Uh, he was playing for those Chinese teams, and he strong player. So very interesting stuff there. Across the way, though, we've got Mouse, and it's going to be an interview with Spudio. Tolly, what you got to say? Thanks again, guys. I'm here with Spudio, the coach here for Mouse Sports. How are you feeling today? I'm, uh, I'm good, yeah. So day number one, you're up against Get On My Level, the Southeast Asian representative team. What kind of preparation have you guys gone through to day number one? Um, we haven't done too much. I think we're just going to try and play our own game. So just normal drafts and just try and win. Got you on here. Now, how has it been the transition specifically for Frostiac in the jungle here? Also, Dardas as well now. How has that been for you guys? I think Frosty fits um, BMT's playstyle a little bit more. He likes to be really aggressive, so and Frosty just smokes all the time. And Dardas, you know, he's, he's a really good mechanical player, so he can play any, any role, really, to a good level. So. Fair enough, fair enough. So my very last question to you, Spudio, is once you guys make it to HRX, who else is joining you on the table? Uh, I'd probably say Obey, Rival, I'm going to say CLG. CLG over Space Station. Yeah, I think so. Wow, some very bold, a little spicy one. Little spicy words coming from Spudio, coach of Mouse Sports. Thank you so much for your time, Spudio. Back to you at the desk. Thanks, totally. Thanks, Spudio. And uh, yeah, we'll we'll see how how everything works out. Spudio uh, played with Mouse previously. Now, uh, kind of moving over. It can be interesting to watch this team. It is, and I think that Mouse has a lot of potential here at the at this placement stage. I just don't know how much we can really expect out of these these new additions or, or new roles, I'd say, for a lot of these players. Is Dardes ready to play ADC at the highest level? Is Cherio going to be able to play support at that high level? Is Frostiak going to be able to play at the SPL level for this long? And, and I think that's a, a really big point here. Again, I mean, you know what? Get on my level kind of opened up the door, so we're going to stay realistic here. I think that Get on my level is a team that is not as, as accomplished as some of the other squads. And so Mouse coming in here, this is a team that I, I want to be very, very real. There's a ton of talent here. Dardes, I think, was one of the standout players when he was in the support position. Can he do it in carry? Cherio routinely in presses the best in the business when he comes to land i'm talking whoever your favorite player is cherio impresses them and that's exciting the rest of the team has their own superlatives and shifting around changing positions that can create a learning environment this is a great opportunity i think for them to test themselves on the real field i think that's the big thing is all these role changes that kind of happen just kind of suddenly in the season just here's one little change here here's another person moving over here that's really going to be where it comes down to is how did they adapt to their new role and how are they going to adapt against the teams that they're playing up here, especially against SEA, who's known for being a little different. As for SEA and what they can do in this game and in this match, I think that the more you can just frustrate your opponent, pick something weird, yeah. spam taunt their bodies, hide in their back camps and kill them, just get, some, get the enemy team arguing with each other because you're going to need their help in order to beat them in this sort of matchup. So... I mean, I, if, I, if I'm on get on my level, anything's on the table. I'm, I'm picking Loki. I'm, uh, I'm putting some words in your mouth here. Are you saying that Mouse is a team that's easy to tilt? I think almost any team in the Smite Pro League is an easy team to tilt if you do it right. Wise words spoken from an ex-professional player himself. Bands coming out here. Terra and Odin going to be banned out by get on my level. And then Mercury and Arlong Shen banned out on the right-hand side. That does mean that Pele is open, but it'll be Athena for get on my level instead. Pele, after her showing with, La maybe it was just Lazbra, he played great in general in that set, but uh, Pele is pretty good. There's Cherio. First view of Cherio on land so far. Very excited. It's always exciting to see Cherio on land. See? Do not indulge him, J Mac. It's always exciting. No, uh, look, I understand your natural caster instincts. Save my idiot co caster. <laughs> we have a special rule here. If it's F dot, there, he's beyond saving. Let, if he wants to just pretend like we're on some sort of discovery documentary about Cherio, then that's fine. Just let him. Don't, don't, don't indulge. Everybody should be a big fan of Cherio. We get the Naja, which could be support Naja for the man. It probably is. It I don't could doubt be it. very exciting. You say you don't doubt it. We've seen it in the regular season. And I mean, this is going to be a fun match to watch because of what both of these teams are going to bring out. I mean, we have a non zero percent chance of seeing Loki today. 
Yes. Yeah. We have a good chance of seeing two of them because the Morgan has been locked in here for get on my level alongside the Pele. So now it's a looking a little less there, but the Pele is going to fit well with this composition. And I've seen some double Pele in the past, and double Pele is disgusting. This is a great first three picks for get on my level. Yeah. It's good CC, it's good early game, good late game. You've got great opportunity to take the best selections out from Mouse Sports. I love their first three picks. Frosty icon on your screen right now. It's been a while since he's come to LAN. Uh, previously, kind of as successful in his own right, generally on the uh, above average, but not top teams in the pro league, took sort of a leave of absence, and then was coaching Mouse behind the scenes before stepping in and taking that jungle role. So an interesting shot to see him. There's Dardes, who, you know, I it, it was bittersweet watching him switch to the carry role for me. Dardes, for my money, was one of the, was the most exciting support to watch and arguably the best support around. And he leveraged that by going, I'm so damn good, I'm going to be the carry. Will it work? That's a question. But I, I can't help but think that maybe they lost something by shifting Dardes into the support position. I think so. Or, or away from it, rather. I, I think it's not quite the same that it was. You always knew Dardes up there with Jermaine as the bruised brothers, but now that the one brother is gone, is the other brother enough to really maintain the bruise portion of it? And switching into this care role, he's not going to be as aggressive as he used to. I mean, we all love seeing you know, the Aries just pop up, being the biggest bully in that duo lane. But now we see Cherio over there, and taking this assassin support is not uncommon. But, Ryan, do you think that drafting this Naja this early is saying this is Cherry, or do you think they're still letting, letting this flex for Frosty it, It's flexible, and that's why you see them go for something like a Discordia, because it leaves the door open. Ratatosker means that will be Naja support. Maybe solo, though, probably not. Neek is kind of the, the de facto frontliner for this team more often than not. Uh, I, I, going back to your point, Tom, I do think that it takes something away from Mouse Sports. It isn't just as simple as, oh, well, Carries are more important than supports, so that's why we're going to move Dardes there. I would make the argument it's the other way around. I think a good support does more for your team than a good hunter. So I think that this might be a Band-Aid fix for Mouse in the short term. I think Dardes' best chance to win a title in Season 5 or in Season 6 is with him in the duo lane just playing the Guardians. And there's the uh, a little bit of off there for Get On My Level, taking the Scotty early up into this draft up against the... Potentially Naja Freya lane here as this Discordia is most likely going into the mid roll. Woof, quite literally there. Uh, get at my level, taking a page out of T Money's book and going with the Scotty. We'll see if it works out over there. <laughs> That's fair. It's not it's mid. It's not mid. It's not mid. That's fair. But uh, Scotty, just where has she come from? The Camazots going to be a choice here for get on my level. Looks like it's going to be a solo Zots or Pele, which is funny because I've compared the two of them together quite often. Tanky by way of uh, Death Knight tank, very leech, heal oriented. So interesting, Pele and Zots doing their thing. Scotty and Athena seem to be the lane. Morgan in the middle. So the right side will be Pele and Camazots. Meanwhile, Mouse, they finish their draft off with a Hercules. I like the character. I think he's pretty good right now, and, and up against these five gods in particular, who is going to kill him? I mean, yeah. look, there's a lot of damage on get on my level, but it's not it's not that damage that it feels like can burst through this Hercules, unless we see Kamazots, if that is Kamazots jungle, which I would anticipate, pick up an early Brawler's beat stick, which honestly they should because it'll it'll help against the Hercules, it helps against the Naja, it helps against the Freya. All three of those gods have some sort of sustain in the kit. Ratatoskr a slight amount as well. Uh, I think some early anti heal could go a long way here for get on my level. I think this Hercules is fantastic up against this comp, honestly. He, uh, like you said, who's going to eliminate the Hercules right off the bat? You have Morgan's sustained damage throughout with the Dark Omen, but who's going to get that big 600 damage ability off right on the bat onto the Hercules that's going to really tear through that heal of his? Late game, that might just be the Morgan, but yeah, in the early in the mid game, I mean, you're looking at Scotty to do a lot of the damage. Kamazots is going to come through with a full damage build, obviously, so it's going to be interesting. Will it be enough to take care of the Herc, who has been very, very, very strong throughout the majority of this season? Set number three, Mouse and Get On My Level. We're going to get right into it for the action. Three, two, one. Thanks, Tom. Thanks to J-Mac and Aggro as well. Finch and Taco here on the call for Get On My Level up against Mouse. And it has been a day of upsets, a very close set one where LG had the gear trifecta bested just now by Insignum. Can Get On My Level continue the trend or will Mouse Sports shut them down?
Yeah, all of North America probably sweating right now. Oh, yeah. After those first couple of I sets. I saw them tweets. <laughs> it's, it's hard not to be, man. I mean, you come into the international portion of the placement rounds, and you're almost expecting the SPL team versus an international team or yes. even the SML players. Like, of course the SPL is going to win. Or at least that's what we were inclined to believe. Uh, nowadays, I, I can't be so sure, but... One thing is for certain, Finch, and that is Europe has been looking fantastic so far. Another thing that's for certain is that uh, good on my level are pretty nutty good draft, right? I like me some Morgan Pele together. We'll see if they can make it all work in action. This Mouse Sports team have been able to get the Naja here for Terry of a support he very much likes to play. Early on, though, there's a lot of aggression. Ring bounce is good to slow them down to create some space, so they should be okay. Terry and Dardes are used to playing. Kai having a hard time deciding between whether or not he wanted to dash forward, but even now, still looking to play aggressive onto Dardis. Dardis will be forced out of the purification beats early on, but they don't plan on letting up anytime soon from this aggro, Finch. Nearly able to grab that Athena, but just barely getting out now. Got to rely on a little bit of sustain. Make your love going with a ma mage's blessing to get started over here for Scotty. Give you some extra power and a little bit of love on the ability damage as well. We, we talked about this match prior to the day even beginning, Finch, and, and the main category that we kept touching on was how aggressive get on my level and, and C tends to be in general. They so do love to play aggressive. Mouse Sports, probably one of the only teams here, I think, that would really want to go toe to toe with them in every single one of those aspects as Frostiac collects the first blood in the mid lane onto Bluefish. A respawn first blood at that impressive stuff coming out from Mouse Sports Frostiac. Catching him out a little bit and able to put the punishment there onto Blue Fish. Something that Rat can do a little bit if he can catch you out with that stun and try and cause some problems working together with Big Man Tanks. Mouse Sports getting started early and they're not done yet. Apex going to fall as well. Frostiac, a bit of a madman here in the early game, already has the acorn finish. It's the Frostiac effect. I, I think we've already sealed the deal on who's bringing this one home, Finch, because Frostiac, he will either get or give up the first blood. <laughs> And when he gets the first blood and is able to find a double kill after the fact, that is the kind of start you are looking for on the Ratatoskr. And Frostiak really does feel kind of like a rhythm shooter, to use a basketball analogy, right? He, not all of his shots land, but he's unafraid to take them. And once he is hitting, once he is in rhythm, that lack of fear that he can sometimes play with really can make him a top-tier jungler. That, that I think this, this team really can play a little bit better than maybe their record might show at some time. So once he comes in, he's hitting everything, then it's tough to beat this team. Cherio has got Hikai and Maker on the run in that duo lane. Both of them just so scared to want to push up any further. Hikai, after nearly dying in those early waves, probably unhappy that it was his teammates who ended up being the, the first blood, but at the same time, he's also a little bit relieved he wasn't the actual first blood himself. Get on my level in a little bit of trouble here in solo lane, but there is some sustain to help out the Kamazots. But he's still slow. Frostiak might make it in time. The stun lands, and they find one more kill. Frostiak on a killing spree already. Bluefish now in some danger. Big Man Ting's already level 5. Tosses out the apple to Strife and Unruly Magic. All that damage, too much to handle. Morgan going to get brought down one more time. Just barely able to avoid the last bit of damage. There's Maker Love, and the action won't stop. Apex in trouble over in solo lane as well, but just barely able to reposition Nika with a brave path, is able to just barely get away from get on my level, but Mouse Sports come out of the gate firing. We haven't had, even had a lull in the action to show this first blood replay, but got to keep in mind everything that started it off was Frostiac with this respawn first blood of the game. Yeah, Frostiac, we weren't able to quite get a look at how this happened, but he just blinked in, got the stun. That was really all it took to take down Bluefish. And I believe he was able to get a follow-up kill not too long after this one as well, too. Yeah, we'll see him get Apex out in the jungle. But there's more action here. Cheerio looking to try and get things started. So it's Frostiac. He comes in. Can't find the knockup, but they're going to look for Hikei and Maker Love instead. Oh, no. Kaldor just ran out of health at the very last tick. Cheerio going to manage to just squeeze on out of there. But Frostiac with yet another double kill to his name. And this Ratatoskr, five levels, five kills. Right now, Frostiak is feeling it, man, and it's going to be tough to try and slow him down. When Ratatoss can get off to a good start like this, it's already problems. And the thing is, usually for Rat, when he gets the ball rolling early, it's off his ultimate. It's off those rotations he's able to make. Uh, the only ultimate we've seen from Frostiak didn't even really hit. He's been just getting it done with these stuns, with this blink, and catching them out. It, it didn't need to hit, Finch. It was it was there to, to cut off the option. Yeah, Sometimes exactly. you do zoning ultimates, and, and Ratatoss, he's, he's right there on board with it all, but... 
I, I do really like how he's also building into the Transcendence, recognizing how much of a snowball effect he could possibly have. The mana sustain would be ideal, 10% cooldown reduction also, and just a sheer power spike can never really go wrong. All stats that are very uh, ideal for a rat. Oh yeah, it's a huge power spike for him if he's able to grab it, and he won't have any trouble getting it stacked up either. either. It certainly feels like a win more item as Frostyak goes in aggressively, a huge stun onto Apex, but the stun's better from Bluefish, but not enough. Frostyak gets the kill, but now he's fighting himself. The Spider-Man meme happening in real time. Up into the air, though, he's being taken by Cheerio, comes right back down to trouble, and Big Man Tings finds the kill. It is just like clockwork right now from Mouse Sports. They are all over this map, not even giving Get On My Level any chance to think. Not referencing the player, by the way. We are talking about the team as a whole here. Yeah. Maker, for example, still sitting at level four. Hasn't even been able to hit five yet because he's at the mercy of Dardes, who, by the way, is just casually zoning out in the Athena, too. Level seven. Just having a good time here. And now he's going to try and say, I dare you to come get your own buff. And really, there's not much way for Hikei to try and contest this one. The taunt is expended as well, but Dardes grabs it without any trouble. And I think this is why Cheerio has been freed up to go gank other parts of the map because at this point, Dardes kind of just has the lane. Well, Get On My Level lost so much pressure when their mid jungle fell early on. And because of that, Cheerio realized, I don't need to stick around in this duel lane when I can just heavily help Frostyak by pressuring out right. this Morgan Pele even further. Apex has just not been able to have the same sort of impact that you would expect from the Pele early on. And in fact, I'm not sure he's going to really be able to make much of a mark, period, at this rate, because Mouse are just strangling the jungle of all little bits of XP that you could possibly imagine and get on my level, just have nowhere to go. Yeah, it's a farming shortage if you're on get on my level right now. Where do you go to try and find more? Because Frosty X constantly in your jungle, stealing away your buffs, just waiting on you to try and gank you when you come through. We saw the exchange you had with Bluefish, who barely escaped. It's too much damage. Nika almost gets him with the boulder. It just wasn't quite enough. He wants it. Nika has been searching for this solo kill since the very start of this match. And I think that's another problem for get on my level, the player because he went for the Kamazots, I think, with the intentions of being a lame bully. Wasn't really provided that opportunity, though, up against the Hercules. That was such a late Herc pick in the draft, and we don't even really see Hercules all that often anymore. Frostyak well, gets good on my level, but Dardes might be in trouble. A three-man rotation, Valkyrie's discretion. Allows for good return fire, but he can't bring anyone down. The ultimate coming out from Calder is too much, and they finally bring down the tank boss. Dardes ends up falling, but Terio going to make him pay. He gets the ring bounce and the sash, and KE barely dashes out. I think Terio might have had the double kill from the start if he'd ring bounce for his entryway, but got to pay props where it's due. Although Calder looking to finish off this kill, still giving chase to Cherio, by the way. I'm not sure he's going to be able to make it out of here. And he tries to turn around and use the ring bounce. It's just not enough. Cherio ends up falling. I like the idea. He might even have been able to either get the slow or even give his life away somewhere else and deny the kill, but unfortunately not able to find it there. Signs of life from Get On My Level, but unfortunately quickly put out Big Man Tings with yet another kill onto this mid lane Morgan, and Bluefish has just had zero room to... I don't even think the T1 Tower is his property anymore. I'm pretty sure that that area just belongs to Mouse, and he might have the Phoenix range at best. Taco, what tier one tower? It's about to fall here in just a moment as Dardes is getting ganked again. He's looking for the 2v1 fight. Banish is good. He might be able to trade this out with Maker Love. Frostyak comes back in, and the 2v2 certainly goes their way. A double for the rat, and they put down the dual lane yet again. Dardes with such little pressure. Big Man Ting's going to have to evade away from Apex's initiation here, but at level seven, Apex is simply too far behind to really deal any significant damage with Big Man Tank. Same can't be said though for Frosty. Yeah, gonna spot out Bluefish on that invis from the Morgan, and he's not even gonna have a chance to make it up from that Rat Ultimate through the Cosmos, cut off short. Nice recognition from Cherio to come back up Frostyak for the kill. Yeah, and Frostyak catching out the invis with the dash was what was critical there to make sure they found that kill. But I kind of like the idea to talk about what Get On My Level was trying to do. They kind of have started all inning Dardes, like three members rotating over, saying we can't keep staying spread out with how far ahead they are. We'll never win that way. They're trying to pick a target as Frostyak takes down Maker Love yet again. But they just haven't been able to do it. It was a good response from Cheerio to come back over and make sure Dardes could survive the ganks. Oh, no. Get on my level. Going for the ride that he never asked for. Going to come right back down into the Earthbreaker, but it's not even necessary. Cheerio 
adding kill number 16 to the board for Mouse here. And get on my level already at an 8k deficit in terms of gold. Experience probably right around the same marks, judging by these leads. In fact, it's a little bit higher even, 10.4k. And it's not looking like it's going to lighten up anytime soon here, Finch. No, this, this is obviously going to be very, very difficult for Get On My Level to try and fight into in a team the caliber of Mouse Sports. I trust to be able to cleanly, you know, take this one home. Taco, this is this has gotten out of hand very, very quick. So, I don't think that Get On My Level are 100% out of this match just yet. It's starting to feel like it, and maybe even the team is probably a little bit demoralized at this point, but I, I do think that as far as a composition is concerned, Get On My Level are certainly drafting towards their strong suits. I think the early game is by far the best uh, that we've ever seen from them. I, I think that they definitely feel the most confident in it, but it's hard when Dardis is just destroying your mid laner or jungler, excuse me, within two seconds. They're doing so much damage here at this point, but I sort of get, I get what you mean, right? Uh, get On My Level are at the very least drafting towards the, the best part of of their game that we've seen at this point, which is that which is their early game. It just hasn't worked just yet. Mouse now collapsing onto the Gold Fury. They secure that one with no, with no trouble. Hikei didn't really present much threat. In fact, he's gifted his life away looking for the steal as Get On My Level falls elsewhere. Frostyak unnecessary as Dardas finds one more. And really all Maker Love can do at this point is just back. He can't stick around. I think for round two, Get on my levels, mid and jungle should just look to play a, a little bit more passive at, at the start. I think that when they tried to directly challenge, oof, oh. for Apex, driving strike before he even has a chance to look for that finish kill onto Frosty yet. But getting back to what I was saying, it's just Apex and Bluefish go for the poke exchange. They end up losing out on that, and then it's just a trickle down effect across the rest of the map. It, so where we are now, essentially, uh, of Mouse just steamrolling get on my level. Cheerio. For a second, looked as though he might be in some trouble, but able to find some heal. Even daring Get On My Level to come right back down. The Sash off the mark, though. Maybe used to playing a little bit higher ping as Get On My Level does find a nice kill, but a triple comes through for Nika. He might have room for more. He's blinking for Hikei. He wants it, but the Quadra will elude him a little bit longer. But Get On My Level, that's all they can do to keep those two members alive. Some of the members of Mouse even out farming the in game timer. A couple of level 13s across the board here for Mouse already, and with T1 Tower is stripped away from both mid and duo. Get on my level or not left with many chances to just look for safe farm. If anything, Mouse could potentially just look to freeze the waves really far up to continue punishing Get on my level. Although I'd imagine Mouse are probably going to start shifting their attention a little bit more towards objectives such as the Fire Giant and the Pyromancer. Yeah, that would be the best call for him. At this point, Get on my level cannot afford to come out and fight them. I mean, they're down as much gold as minutes in the game right now, nearly 12,000. And Get on my level can't even safely go to his blue buff, Frostiac, bullying him away. But this is a bad draw for Get on my level in a couple ways because. So often they rely on more aggression than their opponents can can react to in order to get their kills as Nika drops down Maker Love with the boulder. But that's not going to work against a team like Mouse. And Mouse is so willing to take early fights anyway, as what they want. And so they've kind of run into almost like a, a future version of themselves, it feels like, right? Is now godlike for Frostyak. A couple of promising moments here, though, for getting on my level. Some of the members of Mouse falling a little bit lower than usual, and Mouse. Now making this charge down the dual lane side. They're all ready to start farming off these T2 towers. And at this rate, Finch, I'm almost expecting them to find the Phoenix pretty soon also. They should be able to, but the respawn timers are very short at this point. Apex, Bluefish, and Hikei will be back alive. Again, it's only 13 and a half minutes here into the game as they threaten the left side Phoenix, make her love in some trouble. They can't find the stun, but they will be able to find the Windfire Wheels. Brings Gunner My Level right back down to Frostyak who finds an easy kill. Phoenix still standing half HP at this point, but they're juggling the aggro well. Great job here from Nika. Gonna have to reset this Phoenix. It's so incredibly low. Frosty, Frosty though, looking for the double nut. kill. The flurry of Acorns just destroying Apex and Maker at the exact same time. Left side Phoenix down and Frosty Act not done yet. Hikei being chunked by Dardes, who finds the kill. A killing spree for the Hunter. Only Bluefish left standing. I mean, at this point, Mouseports can go wherever they want. I almost thought they were just going to start going after the Titan there for a second, but then I remember there's still three towers left standing in Mouse. Might not be feeling all that comfortable just yet. They've got a pretty commanding lead, to say the least, and 
I, I don't expect them to really want to risk slowing that down. And, and Taco, I kind of want to know how far you think Mouse really has the potential to go because they made a lot of adjustments coming into this event, right? The big swap up with, with even though Spudio had played well for them, you know, putting Dardes in that hunter role where he can play like the carry that, that we know he's capable of, bringing in Frostyak to be in the jungle for them as well. A lot of people wrote them off making that many changes. I mean, how far can this Mouse board team really go? I think that Mouse has a lot of untapped potential. I don't think that this team has hit their peak just yet. I think, if anything, they've only just started to approach it. And I'm actually really excited to see how they progress throughout this placement round stage. I think that this matchup against Get On My Level in particular might not be the greatest display for them on sure. their actual um, skill level right now, just because I, I do feel as though Get On My Level are still lacking a little bit of the necessary experience to stay a bit more evenly towed with this European team. Well, the Fire Giant is going to go down in Mouse Sports' favor. No way for Get On My Level to come in and contest that one with how far behind they are right now. But I think this is the kind of team, Mouse, that, that certainly does have some potential. I mean, at, at, at the gauntlet last year, they, they really kind of had their glow up, didn't they? They really showed up. They had a strategy that a lot of other teams couldn't answer. And when you get Cheerio in a land environment and a team with this much talent on it, with Dardes on it as well, they certainly can make some noise. It's exciting. But I, I, getting back on track to what's happening in game now, I, I do like what Get On My Level the player is doing by split pushing the map as much as possible. Even that little bit of 500 gold from the Team One Tower can make a pretty big difference when your team has been so deprived the entire match. Got to try and find that farm where they can and Get On My Level was trying to find it over in Duo. They at least got the Tier 1 as Apex was removed over on the right-hand side. A bit of a split for Mouse Sports now, 34 kills already. An absurd amount, Sash lands, get on my level, up into the air by Cheerio. We started to build some damage here at this point in the game because why not? Big Boulder coming through, removes Maker Love. They find two more, a double kill, a day aside coming through. Frosty at getting it done. I mean, the, the respawn timers are short where they'll all be right back up, but that's a lot of damage. Was that? Just the boulder damage, or there did must Dardes, have been something else, I think right? Dardis also <laughs> got um, a proc on him with his with his own damage. I'm not entirely certain. It could just be the massive level gap between the two. I mean, six level difference can also lead to moments like that. But Finch, I think the suffering's nearly over here for getting on my level, at least for game one. It was a bit of a doozy to walk into, but they made it through. It's back to the drawing board for getting on my level, certainly. And I think that that one just got away from them very early on. And we, we, we talked about it, right? A lot of their identity is this early aggression. It is trying to build up those leads off of, you know, picks that you're not expecting, off taking fights you don't expect them. It, it's just going to be difficult for that to work against a team like Mouse, who, who they like to do that very often. I think this is just a great example of how unforgiving competitive play can be once sure. you make small misplays in the early game and just how drastically they can impact the rest of the match because the entire pacing was just dictated from Frostyak finding two kills so early on. And Ratatoskar, such a ideal guy to get that early snowball factor going and then he just continued to escalate his lead by not only aggressing even more so inside of the enemy jungler yeah. uh, farm, but he also made sure to gank on the duo lane, then he ganks the solo lane off cooldown. Sprinkle in, Cherio going all over the map, just sashing anyone he pleased. It, it was it was pretty catastrophic for Get On My Level. Yeah, that things got pretty out of control very early on in that game. And I think Get On My Level can look a little bit better than that if things don't spiral out of control that quickly. So they'll certainly have a chance to make some improvements. It is a best of three. They'll have one more chance here in game two at the very least. Let's get it back over to the desk and get their breakdown of that game. Thanks, John. Great cast, John. Great cast, Taco. Great game, Mouse. Just that simple. Get on my level. Weren't on the level. And they lose the game. I think it was pretty cut and dry. Frostyak went 20-0. The uh, That's the beginning, middle, and end of where that game went. Yeah. I mean, sometimes you, you're just hitting it that hard. I mean, Frostyak literally just wrote the book for that game. He said, <laughs> I'm going to kill you. I'm going to kill you. Chapter two, I'm going to come kill everybody else. Chapter three, game over. We've been saying for a long time that this is a jungler-driven league uh, exaggerated here in season five, and I think that uh, Frosty Act just kind of put on display the potential of all of that. His ability to kind of just rotate from lane to lane to lane and make sure that every lane, I, I always compare it to like root beer tapper, right? Which one is in trouble? Which one can you hit? And he just hit every single bottle. Everybody was was super far ahead on Mouse. I mean, Nico was uh, killing everybody and also unkillable. I mean, look, Mouse could have picked basically anything. Alongside Frostyax Ratatoskr, 
and won that game. Because, Anubis? Yes, they could have picked Anubis, and they would have won that game. <laughs> Let's take a look at some of the stuff Frostiak was doing throughout the course of the game. He's on this ride of Tasker, level 5, steals the red buff, turns around, and then just goes ahead and kills all of the people in front of him. This is pretty much how the game went for the entirety of the game. This Just repeat this about 10 more times, and that's about what happened to this, this game to get on my level. I mean, I think it was at 13 minutes or something like that. Nika rotated over and stole a red buff and was just walking around as red buff Hercules. And I think that boulder at the right side, Phoenix, one shot maker? It's certainly possible. Hercules boulder hits for, what is it, uh, 1100 plus over 100% scaling. Yeah, kind of incredible. This is just another cleanup kill from Frostyak, but this is the play you were talking about here. Uh, level 16 to level 10. He's going to miss the knockup onto that one. We all know Nika's bad with any of those knockups. Miss them a lot throughout the game. But here's the boulder, and there he goes. Instant dead. Yeah. This, I mean, he's level 16. What can you really do against a fed Hercules? Not a whole lot. Get on my level. Here basically just resets and hopes to do a little bit better this time. Because I, I, there, there's nothing about picks and bans, I don't think, in particular. Maybe the Bling Scotty isn't the way to go, but it, it, it truly didn't impact the game because Frostyak got so far ahead. So I'm really looking to see if that right side of the map from get on my level can keep... Frostyak and Nika a little bit more in check.